Well, we're also joined by Kurt Guyette, an investigative reporter for the ACLU of Michigan. His work focuses on emergency management and open government. Michigan has the most sweeping emergency management laws in the country, which allow the governor to appoint a single person to run financially troubled cities. Emergency manager Darnell Early, uh, who presided over the Flint water switch, is now the emergency manager of the Detroit public school system. This week, Detroit's teachers have staged a series of out to protest the vast underfunding of the public schools, which have black mold, rat infestation, crumbling buildings, and inadequate staffing. Detroit teachers say they have up to 45 or 50 students in some classrooms. So, Kurt Guyette, can you talk about how this man, who is the one who ultimately pushed the switch, relying on the uh, turning from the Detroit water system to Flint's River, that has poisoned so many people? is now in charge of the Detroit public schools, and we're hearing health problems, not to mention education problems. Well, one of the things about the emergency manager law is that uh, these managers were given extreme uh, unchecked authority. And the thinking was, the reason for doing that is that it would give them the ability to come in, uh, clean up the problems, and get out. And so there was an 18-month time limit put on their uh, terms, except that uh, this governor uh, is exploiting what amounts to a loophole in that law. So what happens is that these emergency managers serve for 17 months and, and 29 days, and the day before their term expires, they resign, a new emergency manager is put in place, and the clock starts ticking all over again, and they just shuffle them from one place to another. So early goes from Flint to uh, run DPS. And it just perpetuates this, this control. It can go on, really, forever, if, if they wanted to, uh, denying people of their democratically elected uh, representation, because the uh, school board, uh, which has been fighting emergency management every step of the way, gets completely marginalized. Uh, they have zero authority whatsoever. And that goes to the heart of the problem of this law. It eliminates the uh, democratic checks and balances that uh, make a democracy functional. And the other thing is, what we're seeing here is really the imposition of austerity. This is what austerity looks like. So you have all the problems in these schools uh, that you just reported on, because they're treating it like a managerial problem rather than a structural problem. It, I've used uh, before the analogy, it's like uh, being the captain of the Titanic and you hit an iceberg. It doesn't matter who's at the helm, the ship is going down unless you plug the, the hole. And, and they, they haven't plugged the holes. They Kurt haven't Guyette, fixed the uh, structural problems. Kurt, we have just about a, a minute, but I just wanted to ask you, in terms of the cities that Governor Snyder has chosen uh, to uh, institute these emergency managers. What's the racial composition of a lot of these cities? Uh, they, they, with the exception of one, they are all majority African American, and they're also all very poor cities. So this is a, a, a racial issue, and, and it's a class issue. Finally, Dr. Hanna Atisha, I wanted to go back to this question of Legionnaire's disease. I mean, if it could get any worse, is there a connection between the water contamination, the lead poisoning, and Legionnaire's disease? Well, I'm not an expert on Legionnaires, but the water um, chemistry was a perfect setup for this to happen. Um, the, the corrosive water that was untreated with corrosion control not only leached lead, but it also leached iron from the pipes. And iron eats up the chlorine, which you need to kill your bacteria. Um, and then the iron also served as a nutrient or food for bacteria to overgrow. So it was a, it was a perfect setup um, for outbreaks like this. I want to thank you both for being with us. Of course, we'll continue to follow this story, Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha of Hurley Children's Hospital, and Kurt Guyette, an investigative journalist with the ACLU of Michigan. Thanks so much for joining us.